Global Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Asset Management Fortress in Cumberland has launched its Westlake View Logistics Park, further increasing the company's warehousing and logistics development pipeline, which currently has a cross lessable area of about 1 million square meters that spans Hateng, the Western Cape and KwaZulu-Natal. David Oliveira tells us more. The Westlake View Logistics Park comprises 17,838 square meters of warehousing and 2,040 square meters of office facilities. The Logistics Park achieved practical completion in March this year and is ready for occupation. Engineering News caught up with Fortress Director Andrew Texera, who highlighted the features of the company's latest property launch. It's really a warehousing and logistics facility, um, just under 20,000 square meters. What we refer to as a world-class uh, A-grade logistics facility. Um, you can see um, from a design uh, perspective, a, a warehouse is all about the height and the floor. So the floor is the FM2, um, it used to be referred to as the FM2 special floor. So from a loading perspective, it can take about 12 ton point load. Um, FM2 refers to the flatness of the floor, so we can rack um, to 12 meters to the underside of the pallet using standardized equipment, I, I, not specialized equipment that cost a fortune. Um, from a column spacing, we do 32 by 32, so you can see from, a, from the size of this building, um, very few columns. Typically, how these were built a couple of years ago is they would have about three times the amount of columns that we've got in here. It's a little bit more expensive to build, but uh, much more flexible, um, and you don't have to design around the columns, your racking layout around the columns. Um, Eve's height, uh, 13 and a half meters, so we can rack to um, 12. From an uh, energy efficiency uh, perspective, uh, a lot of clear um, sheeting in here, but we are mindful of the heat loads in here. So typically you can rack this warehouse, leave all the lights off during the day and you'll have a 200 lux level at ground level. So power failure, whatever, the, 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 the warehouse can still function. Texera highlighted the importance of location and proximity to key highways to ensure the efficiency of transporting goods. Uh, logistics is all about location. Transport costs are huge, you want to keep the transport costs uh, low. So you want to be able to get in and out of the property uh, easily and, 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 and efficiently. As such, Westlake View was strategically developed in close proximity to the London Road off-ramp, which provides access to the N3 highway. Texera highlighted that the facility's location has the added benefit of having access to the eastern parts of Johannesburg and OR Tambo International Airport without delivery vehicles needing to drive on highways, which is particularly useful in the event of the N3 being congested. The other uh, key feature is um, we don't want trucks standing in the road, so we've got massive stacking areas, big yard areas, hard stands, um, and that's become more and more important because all goods are moved by trucks at the moment. Very few, very little it comes through rail. Um, so most of the, the uh, transport is via uh, the roads. Earthworks for the construction of the logistics park took about two months to complete, which Texera pointed out was a challenging aspect of the project owing to the significant slope of the site, resulting in the construction of high retaining walls around the facility. The superstructure took 11 months to complete. Meanwhile, over the last decade, Fortress has focused much of its asset investments into the logistics and warehousing space. Texera explained why and also provided insight into the company's logistics and warehouse project pipeline. So about 10 years ago, we looked strategically and we said the manufacturing in South Africa sector is coming under pressure, a number of things putting pressure uh, on there. Um, it was the, the low productivity in the country, um, the wage growth exceeding um, inflation. Um, we saw problems with the power supply, uh, very high increases in, in uh, power uh, costs. And that was really, you know, South Africa had a bit of a competitive edge where it came to power and all of these things. And with uh, Eskom doing what they did, all of that competitive edge was gone. So we took a view that we were going to disinvest from uh, manufacturing type properties and we have largely done that. We've sold most of those properties. And with the void that was created in the manufacturing sector, a lot of those products are now imported. So if you're going to import product, it's really you need the warehousing and you need big warehousing, you need efficient warehousing, the cost per pallet uh, as low as possible. And you only get that through new facilities. The old facilities are very low, five and a half or six meters eaves height, very tight yards. A lot of those buildings where they did do warehousing and were designed around uh, railway sidings and all of that it really doesn't work at the moment. So really those buildings are functionally obsolete. And so we looked at creating a, a warehouse pipeline 
And uh, really the, the driver, we also saw some big growth in the retail um, industry and really the warehousing and logistics supports that uh, retail to supply the, the, the retail environment. So we started buying a lot of warehouse buildings, but a lot of the buildings we bought, there were always um, things that were wrong with those buildings. The developers tend to cut all the corners because they keep them for one or two years and then sell them on and then start developing again. And we were inheriting all these problems. So we just thought we can't do this anymore. We're going to create a development pipeline of our own. We long-term holders of the building. So we probably spend a little bit more, but we get a better product, um, less problems going forward because we've got to pick up the cost of those problems. Other news making headlines this week. Technology improved on cranes for efficient operation and new excavator brought to Africa. Technological advancements over the years have meant Madran-based tower cranes and lifting solutions company, SA French, has been able to install trackers on its crane's feet, ensuring more efficient operations during construction projects. There are always challenges in terms of never being able to quite match what one would do in a first world country, uh, having the range of equipment that is available at the drop of a hat, but, uh, but certainly in South Africa we believe that what we have got available um, for clients in rental um, and as well as what, what we can bring in um, for them uh, is we've never, we've never faced the challenge of a job yet that we couldn't, we couldn't provide lifting for. The, um, you tend to find that in South Africa you, use, you will use smaller machines than you would in Europe um, and that just by the nature of big machines, big freight, big cost, so you tend to find that you will use probably more, more cranes of a smaller capacity than, than bigger cranes than in Europe. And at the same time, you also going to be always cognizant of South Africa will never, as long as we have labor, be as mechanized as what the first world will be. Industrial and agricultural equipment supplier Smith Power Equipment has expanded its Japanese construction equipment product offering in South Africa. I have officially been distributing the products of our tractors and our side by sides from 2000, over 17 years. The construction equipment which you see behind me, we've been doing for the last two and a half years, uh, really officially starting in 2014. Um, one of our strengths is that our machines are completely made by Kubota. Uh, Kubota worldwide is the leaders in engine manufacturing up to a certain kilowatt and all of our machines are proudly Kubota. So our machines offer the benefits of the Kubota engine which are fuel efficiencies. Uh, it's a one-stop shop when it comes to spare parts. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.